All right, Coach, congratulations Thank on the you. win. Just, I know earlier innings, you probably kind of felt like you left some runs on the table there, but then what Lex was able to do was unbelievable. What's your perspective of that and what he was able yeah, to do? Yeah, the first four innings, obviously, not really happy with him with the, some of the defensive stuff, and we left some stuff out there with the short game that we need to cash in on. But to keep playing on a Friday night against a really good team, and then Lex got, I mean, three really big swings and big moments. Yeah. Well, what aspects of the team were you most impressed with tonight? Well, the resiliency, right? Like, it's easy right there. Your you're Friday night guy's out in the fifth inning. You're behind. Things aren't going well. Just to stick with it, stick with it. And you got opportunities, and Lex came through. What would you see in Ben's out? He looked fine early. I think some of that stuff with the delays, like, that's, those are long 30-minute innings, and he just lost command of the secondary stuff um, in there and got in some bad counts. And at that point, we felt good about where we were going to be, and Kramer does what he does. And you know, a moment like that can help him know because you may face a similar type of situation later on. In the yes, season. yeah, and he, he's shown the ability to pitch through that. I think if we had a little bit more, the game wasn't so tight, you might have let him pitch through it a little bit. When, when it's that tight, you got Kramer and Centaur and everybody's well rested, we cut him went for it right there. Is it just me or there's some of these delays just kind of taking too long, it seems like? Is that something you yeah, noticed? Or? I think we had some technical difficulties on the first um, thing. Something happened with the camera, so they were just trying to get okay. it right. I didn't think it was even close enough to... But, Ricky, yeah. yeah, but at least yeah. you know they got him right, and that's what it's for, and we'll be happy with that. What do you make of Lex's performance? I mean, he accounts for all seven runs on the board. Man. Yeah, and those are in the approach, like know what you're looking for, know what you're going to get. Like we all know what we want to hit, but like the approach is based around like what are you actually going to get? Get that in a zone you can handle it, and he did that three times tonight. And the base running was was really good too. Yeah, on that base running, like what's your first case? He said he didn't even know if he was being waved around or not. He was gonna, yeah. he was getting home regardless. So what did you think about that? that well, that's an aggressive play. Like the reads right on the dirt ball read, and then that ball's in front of him. So there's really no coaching to that point. Like that ball's in front of him. You got a guy who's a good base runner. If he feels like he can make it, like let's go. Talk about the importance of getting that Friday win, set the tone for this weekend. Series. Yeah, I think that helps. I mean, obviously. Do you have to win the Friday game? No, you don't. But you sure like to win a Friday game in that kind of atmosphere when it feels like that. Like that's that's what an NCAA tournament game feels like when this place is jumping on Friday night with two really really good teams and find a way to, to battle through and win. The whole top third of the order had itself quite a quite a nine picking up a nine run. So of course Matt you know Matt Prevas in the leadoff, but you moved Braden Kalise up to that number two hole starting earlier with against Bethune Cookman. What have you seen from him to put him in that spot and then his performance? Well, he handles the bat, right? So he can handle the bat. They're tenacious at bats. He puts the ball in play. He has a knack for getting hits. That guy led us in hitting in the fall um, from a guy that was just coming back from an ACL surgery. He led us in hitting in the fall. And then we started to see in early spring that he started to run back like I remember him running in high school. So he brings a lot to the table. Though the at bats, being able to run the bases, you saw the the short game stuff in the eighth inning, in the bottom of the eighth with the push punt. Um, he can do a lot. Eleven left on base. How much do you credit Kansas State for? That? Yeah, and I think they matched up well out of the bullpen there in the middle game when they went to the lefty, and then the right-handed sidearm guy's a tough look. I think we left a little bit on the bone. They're like some of those were really good pitches, but there were some pitches in there to hit. I think we would like to have back because if we get the bunt down twice, I think we scratch one. Maybe don't put it out of reach, but you add those ones. It's a different game. Jason Tala with the three inning save. What did you like about his extended outing? And lastly, mm -hmm. I know that was kind of a crazy play to end the game, but how was he? It looked like it ricocheted off his foot. Yeah, he's fine. He hit the bottom of it. He's he's fine. It's going to take a little more than that to hurt Chase. Um, <laughs> but his stuff was great. Command of all the stuff, and even when they got the hits at the end, like. Nobody was really concerned he was going to figure out a way to get us through that thing. What's your confidence, though, when you turn over to Kyle and then Chase? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a luxury. Everybody's like, oh, good job with the bullpen. Well, it's pretty easy when you have Kramer and Sandala. Like, you're just trying to give them opportunities to be successful, and they've rewarded this team. Speaking of Kyle, that's the fifth win of the season, getting almost getting as many wins as some starters in this league. Yeah, and it's, I mean, that's just kind of how it rolls. And like we said before, like there's not really a – closer except Chase on those long push, but we'll, we use those guys in the biggest moments against the biggest part of the lineup, and it worked out. A lot of news, obviously, about UCF this week. Top 25 for the first time in four years. I mean, there's regional projections. I know they don't really mean anything at this yeah. point in the season, but what's kind of your perspective as the coach? You know you're trying to build this thing, and you've got, you know, players kind of see that, and they're obviously locked in on what they got to do. But just kind of, it's a big accomplishment, though, for, for it, what you're trying to do here. Yeah, it's nice to see, because when you sit here and talk to the guys about, hey, we can do this if we do these certain things. No, there's 
we're starting to do those certain things, and that obviously comes with it. Not a concern, not a focus of ours, but it's better to be that way than the other. As you approach the uh, halfway point, the Big 12 schedule, what's your what's your read of the league? What's your sense of the league? You have to play well. Like you can't. You got to play defense. You got to pitch. You got to hit, and you got to do it every night because these teams are physical, talented, and if you don't come ready to play. You're going to be in trouble. So every game, and almost every game, to me, we talked about it. The weekends feel like super regionals. Like for you guys that have been in, we got some guys that have been in them. That's what they feel like. For you that haven't been in them, this is what they feel like, and find a way to win it. A couple errors though that, mm -hmm. that could cost you in a. One hundred percent, and there are errors that are mostly like those are plays that Mike Kluska is going to make that play 99 times. 100 Brate's going to make that throw. I'm trying to think what the other one is. Lex lost Lex in the, the sun. He lost the ball in the sun. Um, tough one on that one. What did it mean to you to kind of be an eyesight of uh, Coach Bergman was sitting in the front row, kind of like right there behind home plate. Yeah, pretty, to have him here tonight, what did that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, it meant the world. Like, that, this place isn't here. Um, if it wasn't for him, he built this with his bare hands, basically. And I wouldn't have got a chance to play college baseball or coach college baseball if it wouldn't been for him. Any Bergman ball moments uh, in the game? Uh, the push punt in the eighth <laughs> a little bit, yeah. That was, that was one of his staples if it was there with a the left-hander, yeah. So when did you decide that you wanted to coach baseball? Was it something that you just kind of observed from Coach Bergman through your playing days here, and, and what was it A that? little bit. Like, I think my senior year, I thought about it, but my senior year, he actually came to me in the middle of practice while I was still a player, and he's like, have you ever thought about this? I was like, I'm starting to. He's like, I think you can do it. We'll have this opportunity as a student assistant next year if you're interested in it. And I was like, Coach, I got 35 more games to play. But that was kind of the light bulb of – you know, I might be, I might want to do it, and then getting around that 04 team of, which was really talented, right? And he gave me a lot of responsibilities on that team, and to coach that team, you win 40 whatever games, and you're in a regional, and you feel like, like, I mean, it's hard not to fall in love with college baseball. Is you, there something of him that you take with you in coaching? You can think of? Yeah, I mean, just the tenacity of every day. Like there was a standard here. And you had to reach that standard every day or he was going to let you know. Um, and we just try to stack days and days and days to reach in that standard. And it all kind of works out. You haven't been much of a yeller, though. So no, no. He wasn't really either. Unless he would get past everybody. Yeah, yeah, he would. He would. He earned some of those, yeah. Coach, what does this team need to do in order to pick up series number four? Just continue. we got to play a little better defense. And some of those moments in early in the game, if we can come through in those, it'll make it a lot easier at the end. But just continue to play UCF baseball and find a way. I've yeah. talked about not only winning a series, but sweeping a series. Is that yeah. something that's a goal that you're um, I mean, you're trying to win the series first. We'll talk about that. If we, get, if we win this thing, we'll talk about that later. So. Right, well, that's like Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank, Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.